Hi, I'm Gene. We often get asked by the six liter community, what makes a truck bulletproof? We've comprised a short video series to answer that very question. In these videos, we are going to highlight how we correct common pattern failures found in the six liter engine. We'll explain what we are doing and why we are doing it, allowing you to understand the problems and make an educated decision when it comes to correcting them. In this first video, we will discuss the engine oil cooler in the 6 liter and what happens when things go wrong there. You might be surprised at how many other components are affected when this one malfunctions. The star subject of these videos is a 2006 Ford F-350. When we first encountered it, white smoke would pour out of the tailpipe during operation. This was our first clue as to what was going on. A moment ago, we mentioned the pattern failures that Bulletproof Diesel has identified in the 6 liter engine. This video will show the replacement of the stock engine oil cooler system, which is one of those pattern failures. The coolant passages within the stock oil cooler can get plugged up with debris, which prevents oil from being cooled and prevents coolant from getting to the EGR cooler, which then ruptures. Other issues within the stock oil cooler can lead to engine oil mixing with coolant or even catastrophic engine problems down the road. The Bulletproof Diesel oil cooler system replaces the factory oil cooler with a radiator-like air-to-oil heat exchanger that doesn't share the same problems as the OE one. With available bypass oil filtration and an optional cold weather kit, the Bulletproof Diesel oil cooler system may be the most important product a 6 liter owner can get their hands on. To get to the truck's engine oil cooler, we had to remove a fair amount of parts from the engine bay. We used the OE removal procedures during teardown, so there's no mystery there. We do, however, have the luxury of lifting the cab off the frame. If you don't have access to a vehicle lift, the Bulletproof oil cooler kit can still be installed. You just won't have as much elbow room. The high pressure oil pump uses oil to actuate the fuel injectors. It's fed from the main engine oil supply, but filtered through an additional screen. The stock screen can get plugged or tear. The bulletproof oil cooler system replaces this with a robust metal screen, meant for years of trouble-free use. This reservoir where the old oil cooler came out of needs to be spotless. We get a lot of phone calls, people that have completed their work and either starts and dies or won't start at all. Most of the time it's a contaminated IPR valve. It happens because they don't get this reservoir clean and as soon as you start it, the first thing that happens is everything sends it right straight to the IPR valve screen and it'll plug it up. So make sure this reservoir is spotless, like surgically clean. Okay, we're going to be installing the transfer block now. And you torque these the same as you would the stock oil cooler, the factory spec. The bulletproof oil transfer block is secured where the stock oil cooler had been mounted, between the cylinder heads in the valley of the engine. The function of this block is to transport oil from the engine to the location of the bulletproof oil cooler assembly up near the front of the vehicle at the grill. I always try to put the sensors back in before I get going. Uh, the oil pressure, oil temp, and the turbo feed are all open holes that if anything falls in there it's all bad. So now's a good time to plug those holes up with their sensors. And I usually just put a piece of paper towel or something in the turbo feed line or hole keep anything from dropping in there during assembly. At this point, reassembly begins around the engine compartment. The oil cooler itself, as well as the filters, will be mounted near the front of the vehicle behind the grill. All right, we got our cooler assembly, complete with thermostat, cold weather kit. It's time to put that in. One available option is a cold weather kit that allows truck owners to regulate oil temperatures in extreme cold conditions. We recommend this to customers who live in chillier climates. Okay, let's put our return hose on. I always like to put a little rag in the end of it so when you're feeding it down where it goes, it doesn't pick up any dirt you're gonna put right into the block. Just don't forget it's there. That will go through the plastic, over the top of the intercooler outlet. The, make sure the condenser is seated in these lower mounts. Check these out. Okay, now we'll install this other end of this inlet hose. With a cold weather kit, you have a 90 on this end, so you have to leave the 
transfer block end loose till you get this clocked in the right position. Try to keep the 90 down as low as you can as you're tightening it. All right, get this good and snug. Let's uh, put our AC lines on where we're at here. The location's about a inch out farther than what it was, but these lines are very flexible. So just give a little love and they'll come right into place. You can kind of flex them as needed to make them fit. They're pretty forgiving. When you're all done, this AC line is most likely going to be touching on this 90. It just takes a little bit of a tweak and that'll stay right there just so you don't have a rub. Okay, let's uh, go back up to the inlet on the transfer block and make sure it's good and tight. Um, next, we're gonna mount the main oil filter. Okay, to mount our filter, we need to first take these two bumper bolts out. There's a permanent keeper on the back side. Catch that. All right, let's install our main filter. I like to start the hose first. Make sure they're straight because it's pretty easy to cross through. It's pretty much how you want it setting. Go around and tighten it up. You can see the old witness marks where the bumper was. That's where I try to put it back to. We've got the oil filter assembly in. Now it's time to put the feed line in. The 90 end goes toward the filter. We push it right in the hole that we just made. And it will just about naturally fall. It needs to be in front of the bracket and behind this feed hose. All right, let's tighten this first one. This hose always leaves this fitting loose. It really helps a lot to get it started. Dell secures the hose near the bracket behind it. The hose connection and jam nut are both tightened, which will then allow the oil filter to be spun on. They'll feel like they're tight, but just keep going because they don't go another turn. And then do the jam nut on top and just keeping that hose right off the bracket. We'll fit the filter in there. Sometimes you have to modify this brace just slightly. Next, we put in the oil filter. Yeah, a little more. Okay, now we've got the oil filter on. Let's uh, move to the bypass side. All right, let's mount the bypass filter. We're on the passenger side. Undo the bumper bolts again, like we did on the other side. All right, we got our front bolts out of the bumper. Let's mount our bulletproof diesel bypass assembly. Okay, we have a hose that we previously routed from the oil cooler that will go to the inlet side of the bypass. And once again, using the witness marks off of the, where the bumper was, let's get it back in place. Perfect. Okay, now let's re install the return line on the bulletproof bypass kit. There's a hole under the headlight assembly. And that's not, yeah, there we go. It'll just barely fit in there. And if you reach right in front of the washer bottle, you can retrieve it. And then I like to route this thing just right along the side of the battery. Okay, now we have our uh, Bulletproof Diesel oil cap with the return installed for the bypass kit. Let's get rid of our stock. Ideally, that's about the routing you want. Good and snug. All right, let's hook it to the filter. All right, we're back underneath and we'll hook it to the outlet of the same assembly. Tighten both lines. Okay, let's install the AMSOIL filter. All right, let's put some oil in it. This is the outlet hose from the block. We didn't hook to the block yet. It's going straight down to the filter. So by doing this, we can fill the filter. We fill the oil cooler. We fill the reservoir in the top of the motor. We basically prime it as well as you possibly can before you start it. With a bypass, it's going to take about 20 and a half quarts. We just got her filled up with oil. Now let's get this line disconnected so we can hook it to the transfer block. This hose will go to the outlet on the transfer block. Uh, best way I found to do it is just get it started on the fitting first. 
All right, we got it started, and then I'll work it down into the location that should be riding permanently. Right across here. We get a lot of, a lot of questions about that one. So that's where it should permanently ride. With the entire oil cooler system now installed and oil back in the truck, the bulletproof diesel protocol involves several hundred miles of testing. As we reassembled the engine, we upgraded other components to correct four other pattern failures inherent in the six liter engine. We'll show you those in the next four segments of this video series. If you have questions about what we do here at Bulletproof Diesel, or just want to know more, be in touch. We're more than happy to assist you in any way we can.